When we were playing video games as a kid, our first mutual adult experience, as in the one feeling that didn't belong to us, was betrayal. Well, that's not true. It was hitting the circle button as fast as we could before our parents got home. We suddenly felt like a cheating partner who wants to finish the job before our wives or husbands would come back. But besides that, whenever we bought a new game, another character would double cross us. Almost too many for that age. Sometimes I wonder why did the developers put all these betrayals in their games? Was it just to create a plot twist? Or did they want to awaken the sense of vengeance in us so a more passionate boss fight would come out of it? Well, I still think about it, but I guess I have a solid answer now. I'm not gonna ask you to keep watching till the end for an answer because this video is not about why there are so many betrayals in video games. So if you're just curious about the answer, it's because of the bond between us and our games. Video game is the only form of art which is interactive, so a betrayal in them is more painful and moving compared to a movie or a book. There. You got your answer. You can leave now, but if you haven't yet, in this video, we talk about how three different games portrayed betrayal in their three unique ways and what did they want to tell us. Before watching the rest, it would be great if you subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Thank you. I sorted the games based on their levels of complexity. So starting with the simplest one and the one that hurts the most, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. General Shepard was the main antagonist in the game, but he didn't reveal his true nature until the very end when he killed Ghost and Roach. So why did he do that? On the memorable mission known as No Russian, you're an American spy who has infiltrated Makarov's group and you're tasked with escorting Makarov on his mission. You're supposed to do a terrorist attack in a Russian airport and kill civilians. At the end of this mission, Makarov who knew your true identity all this time, kills you and leaves your body to be found by Russian police, therefore blaming US for this act and starting World War III. Shepard was the one who informed Makarov about Joseph Allen, the CIA we controlled in that mission. Shepard wanted to retaliate what happened to his soldiers five years ago. He wanted to start a war to become the hero who saves US and in doing so, he spares no effort, even letting his own country to burn in war, even killing two of his men in cold blood. General Shepard has many haters as until today if anyone talks about betrayal, all the gamers immediately think of him. Say whatever you want, but I like him. Yeah, he was a monster, but he really used his brain and I like clever characters. He knew if he exposes the spy to Makarov, then our beloved Russian maniac will use the spy as a bait to blame US for the act of terrorism and start a world war. He knew how his enemies think. Also, he has such cool lines that freezes you to the bone. The more things change, the more they stay the same. We fought and bled alongside the Russians. We should have known they'd hate us for it. History is written by the victor, and here I am thinking we'd won. The whole game is about this man's betrayal as you can find pieces of evidence everywhere pointing towards his master plan. All this time, we were walking on a wide net. That's what makes this scene so beautiful. The moment he can't keep his act anymore, when he has to reveal his true nature. Call of Duty tries to manipulate our feelings the same way Shepard did to Russians and Americans. The game keeps reminding us that all of these people died for nothing, just because a fallen man went crazy and wanted to see the world in flames. So they play with the idea of revenge. They try to make us angry and if you haven't played this game back in its own time, no one can describe to you how satisfying this mission was. For the second one, we need to go back to Los Santos where two hypocrites would backstab us. This one is easier to explain. So basically, Quick Smoke and Ryder sold Group Street to Tenpenny. They wanted to sell cracks there just like Ballast did, but Sweet was against it. So Tenpenny planned to kill him. What was supposed to happen was that a green saber would drive to Group Street and the passengers would kill Sweet. But CJ's mom was in a wrong place in a wrong time. They accidentally killed her instead, resulting in CJ coming back and the situation getting worse for these two. So now Big Smoke and Ryder had to keep going with the plan. They had to eliminate CJ and Sweet before the brothers get the wind of what they had done. Now this one is about brotherhood. It's about backstabbing a friend and it's so different to what Shepard did. The feeling of betraying your home, your hood, and your friends only because of money. Don't know why, but it feels like treason to me. It's on a personal level. You were my friend all these years. We were brothers. You were my brother, Anakin! And you threw it all out. And for what? It's so infuriating. What's even worse is that now you have to kill them. You have to kill your friends. So even though the betrayal is done and gone, it still hurts you to keep going because it was a close friend who did it, not just a military commander whom you didn't have any deep connection with. The last one is a little unexpected. Nier Automata is one of my all time favorite video games with a deep philosophical story and the best music ever. So where's the betrayal? No, it's not this. Or this. Or even this. We actually don't see the betrayal, but we hear it. As we discover in the very end, 2B was actually 2E. 
an executioner unit. Ninus, being such a nosy genius, keeps discovering the truth about humans. You know, the very secret one that the commander told us casually? Yeah, and Tubi, who is actually an executioner unit, is designed to kill him every time he finds out. So, tell me commander, did you just told him the truth even though he still hadn't figured it out? So Tubi has to kill him again? Even though you know this program is about to end soon and you all are about to die, you just wanted Tubi to suffer more? Back to Ninus and Tubi though, you might ask how is this considered betrayal? She was just doing her job. Well, the betrayal doesn't happen here. The real betrayal starts with Tubi growing feelings towards him. Now the act of killing is not just a job, but a constant betrayal to Ninus and his memory. You made a personal connection to someone. You didn't keep your distance as you should, and now you're killing him. It's like being kind to a ship you're gonna kill a second later. Or let me use a movie reference. It's like if Hannibal Lecter would eat his victims before eating them. Anyway, this betrayal is super deep. Imagine having to kill a loved one over and over again and then seeing them the next day and they don't remember you or anything and then you still have to stay alert to not let them discover the truth again. This monologue makes much more sense now. Everything that lives is designed to end. We are perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. Is this a curse or some kind of punishment? I just thought of another Hannibal joke. It'd be like if we'd give them head before they would give him their head. Surprisingly, in this game, it's the betrayer who suffers the most. Ninus is oblivious to all this agony, but every time Tubi kills him, a little part of her dies too. This is by far the darkest one, and in the end, both of them are the victims of their fate. A cycle that only death can put an end to it, but when even death can't end your life, but now? There are so many examples in other games like Cyberpunk, Metal Gear, Dishonored, and the list goes on and on. I think these three were enough to make my point. But if you believe I should do more of these videos about betrayal or any other experience that has been portrayed in video games, tell me in the comment section. Also, it would help me a lot if you subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thank you and you know the rest. Be safe friend, don't you dare go alone.